Hi guys, thanks so much for tuning in and welcome to my channel. So today's video we're going to start the elusive tarantula feeding video 139. I can't believe I made so many videos in this series and you guys love it. So with the new recent additions that I got for my birthday, uh, the Reptile Expo and uh, the mail that you saw before and the secret ones that I haven't shown you yet, it's time to update the whole collection. So rather than doing a simple arachnid video where I just say, well, well, this is it, I'm going to feature almost every tarantula that I have in my collection. I have Cochran, guys, on the video description, you'll see timestamps and I'll include every scientific name of the spider and common name if applicable. Guys, sit back and enjoy. All right, so let's start off with the very first tarantula. This one here is a female Aphonopalma calcodes, uh, desert blonde. This one is Marilyn the second. Now Marilyn seems to be picky of what she wants to eat. Sometimes she'll eat, other times she won't. Uh, this is probably why you don't really see her in many of my feeding videos. Here we go, nice size female. She's about four inches. All right, here's another Aphonopalma that I know will eat in front of us. Uh, this one is my mature female Aphonopalma simani, which is the Costa Rican zebra. Boosh! You can see very typical of a simani. They have an orange underside and the spinnerets too are orange. Really nice tarantula from Costa Rica and Guatemala. All right guys, so you can probably see the little leg over here. This is one that you don't really see too much in my collection. Uh, this is one of my female OBTs, uh, Trinachillus murinus red face. Yep, that's considered an attack. Uh, this one's a lot smaller than the one that you see on my channel most of the time. Uh, where is this one so you can see where she is? Yeah, there she is. Good three inches. This tarantula is phenomenally gorgeous. This one here is my mature female, Pocletheria, or I always keep saying it wrong, but it's Pocletheria uh, tigrina with celli, uh, which is the Wessel Tiger ornamental. Woo, nice. Really great species. Now let's give her one more, because I think that she deserves it. Booyah! There we go, nice. She's about five and a half, close to six inches. And fully grown too. You can probably barely make out the legs. Uh, she is under here. Oh, there she is. <laughs> uh, this is my other OBT female. Trinachillus murinus red phase. This is a huge one, almost six and a half inches. This one is crazy. I want to see if I can try to draw her out. D 
damn nature, you scary. My, oh my, a Miss American Pie drove the Chevy to the levee. <laughs> Anyways, this is my immature male Samapoas Cambridge, which is the Trinidad Chevron. Beautiful. Somewhere in this mess of a web is my Carabina Laeda Mature Female, which is the Puerto Rican pink toe. So you saw how small the male is. Well, I'll get a load of the female. She's actually twice as large, so I'm going to have to feed her pretty well. And she is mean. Oosh. And we'll give one more to her. All right, so that was the female and this is the male. I'm actually gonna give him some crickets cause he's a lot smaller than the female. Yeah, he's over there. He's definitely about half the size of the female. I don't think he's interested, but it'll be a nice interesting breeding project to breed these two. This one here is my female Hedescodra maculata, Togo Starburst baboon. All right, my HMAC wasn't interested in feeding. Uh, worth a shot for this one. Uh, this is a megalomorph, which is a unknown trapdoor spider from Malaysia. I've owned this guy for like four years and I probably only saw it once. I do know it's alive because it's eating crickets just fine. I almost never film this one because you don't really see much. Alright guys, time to update my colony named the Saviors. This is Hysterocrates Gigas, the Cameroon Red Baboon, and some of them are actually starting to get larger now. So there they are. There's probably about like nine, ten of them. So, it's ED time. Maybe some of them are eating. Oh, there you go. Awesome.
All right, cool. Okay, so that was shelf number one and number two. Now this one here is shelf number three. And well, hey, 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 look at over here. A nice freshly molted specimen. This actually seems fresh, so I won't be able to feed her yet. So I'll wait a couple more days. This is my Cyclosternum species Macala, which is the Peruvian peach collard. You can probably tell where they got the common name by looking at the uh, peach colored femurs. <laughs> Well, I can see that she is definitely freshly molted. If you look at her fang color, it's more like a blood red. So I'll have to wait a couple of days for her to feed, but a nice molten, totally unexpected. Yeah, yeah, she's mean, and that's why we called her Beachy Natasha. All right, this is my newly rehoused Saragophagus Schmitty which is the Chinese earth tiger. As you can see, she made a burrow, which is all sweet. Oh. Moving in for the kill. Ooh, nice. Nice takedown. Let's look at her. Wow, really, really pretty. Awesome. This one here is Ada. She is my female Brachypelma erratum, Mexican flame knee. You can tell why they named it the flame knees. Again, as I will say it, just look at the knees are in the shape of a flame. Definitely one of the more skittish members of the Brachypalmas and loves to kick urticating hair. Up next is Chimera. She is a hybrid slash crossbreed of Brachypalma bumgartenii and Brachypalma bomi. I call this one the Mexican orange beauty. Because it's a really beautiful specimen. I would say she's about three inches. This one here is Necroth. He is my male Lassiodora Klugi, the Bahia Scarlet Bird Eater. Let him hunt for himself. There we go. Perfect. This one here is the Dark Earth Tiger, Kilobrachy species Kane Cratchen. Whoopsie. This is a big female, six inches. Got this one for ninety dollars at Tarantula Canada. Whoopsie. Mm mm. Fang looking good. 
Oh, this specimen is absolutely drop dead gorgeous. Uh, she is Petunia, my mature female Brachypelma classy, Mexican pink. Not hard to see why it's called the pink. Pink legs and pink hairs on the abdomen. She's full grown, five and a half inches. Definitely one of the more harder to come by brachypelmas, but if you do get one or find the opportunity to get it. Really nice, unique brachypelma. Very different than the reds and very different than the red rumps. <laughs> That's you pig in Spanish. Alright, this is Emily. She is my mature female uh, Brachypelma Emilia. The Mexican painted red leg, or some people like to call it the Mexican true red leg. I don't know if she's going to be hungry. Look how immensely pumped she is. Damn, Kate, you look sexy in that dress of yours. All right, this one here is a Carabina Versicolor female, the Antilles Pink Toe, formerly a Vicolaria Versicolor. There we go. Definitely very, very pretty. You can see the molt right underneath. And I would say she's looking to be about three inches. Versi colors aren't very big carabinas. Uh, they'll probably get to having a four and a half to five inch leg span, typical of the C. Laeta. You know, what's pretty odd is that even though that they call it the pink toe, they don't actually have pink toes, and that's probably why they lump them out of the Avicularia genus. Boys and girls, we have a rare tea here. This one is Chitose, my female Zenithus species Columbia Blue, which is the Blue Bloom Bird Eater. Sweet. Even though that she looks very leggy, almost kind of like a male, but she's actually female. I've sexed her by molt. Oh wow, you can actually see the femurs and how blue they are. Really pricey tea here in Canada. Unfortunately, the audio was kind of cut off on this one. Over here, I'm featuring uh, my, what I believe to be a immature male Megphobema robustum, which is the Colombian giant red leg. A really nice tee that gets to having an eight inch leg span. And you can see, grab this one without a problem. Up next is Callie. She is my female Brachypelma Kallenbergi, which is the New Mexican Wow. Lazy. <laughs> One way to describe Callie. Very similar looking to the 
Brachypalma vagans, Angustum, Sabulosum, and Verdesi complex. Alright, this one here is Angelica, a Gramistola poteri, female, which is the common rose hair, formerly Gramistola rosea normal form. And to the right is Gramistola rosea. So I got a lot of people asking me the differences between poteri and rosea and how to tell them apart. Well, you can see here is the poteri. Uh, these are like typical rose hairs that you'll find in the pet stores. Uh, this is what sets rosea apart from poteri. If you notice, uh, this is the red face rose hair. Uh, red hair is pronounced all over the body, and this one has little to none. So this is Lois from Family Guy. Unlike Angelica, she seems to be very, very picky what she eats. Again, very typical of Grandma Stolas and they certainly like the fast. Dracula dead and loving it star, Mina. This is my mature female Nandu Colorado Velosis, which is the Brazilian black and white. Doesn't matter if you're black or white. B! D! 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 Hee hee! May MJ proud. The only thing I don't like about the species is the nasty urticating hair that they have. Uh, these have type 3 hairs. And in my opinion, I've experienced uh, hairs from these species and they are the worst. The worst, I tell ya. Mmm, supers. Alright, P. Solitheria, Formosa, Salem Ornamental. Uh, female I missed Woo, nice Very cool Nice fang action going on Injecting with some nice potent venom yeah, You can definitely tell that this female has nice coloration, especially near the patella where uh, purple hues are more pronounced. Oh yeah, there we go, you can see the purple. Alrighty, so here is Lily, my mature female Monocentropus balfouri, which is the Socotra Island blue-legged baboon. In my opinion, really, really nice looking next to the Harpactera pulchropes. Lily Deer's hungry. God almighty, she's beautiful. Courtesy of T Soy Spiders, who donated me this specimen back in 2012, and here we are near the end of 2017, and she's awesome. Let's see, she'll take a second. And it's a really, really great news to hear that a lot of Breeders now are breeding these specimens and you can get them a lot cheaper now here in Canada uh, Slings of this species like five years ago were about almost 300 400 bucks Now you can pick one up for about $50, which is a really really great price if you ask me This one here is a Brachypalma angustum Costa Rican red-haired Ornithoctonus oritibalius, the Thailand gold fringe, uh, female about two inches. Oh, there we go. Heard an attack. Yep, there it is. 
Yep, just like Haplopelma or Cerogopagus, they love to burrow. Alright, this one is one of the largest species in the Nandu genus. Uh, this one is Nandu tripepi, the giant blonde bird eater or giant strawberry blonde bird eater. Confirmed female. Vicious eater. Alright, this one here is Nandu tripepi, giant blonde bird eater. This is an unsexed Juvenile now. Oh, nice. Hit hard like a brick. Wow. I'm just simply amazed on how good shelf number three is. Most of all the teas, except for the uh, Cyclosturum species Macala and the Rosea red face. And of course, B. Emilia did not eat, but all of them are superb. Alrighty, so I better charge my battery, so this will be the last tea I'll do for at least a couple of hours. Uh, this one here is my female Brachypalma bumgartini, which is the Macoan Orange Beauty. Beautiful. Now you could definitely tell this is the real deal Bumgartini. If you notice at Camaria she only had a triangle on her carapace that was black in color. If you have a true B. Bumgartini, which is the one that you're seeing right now, uh, you should see the carapace completely black like a Brachypalma smithy or B. Hamori. And you would have the legs colored similar to the B. Bomi. Also, a very, very difficult brachypelma to come by in the hobby. Alright, so now moving on to shelf number four. We have a female Lassiodora parahybana, the salmon pink bird eater. This one is Daniela. Sweet. Currently about five inches. Here's my other female named Daisy. Oh yeah. All right, just to give her one more. She's coming in for the kill. Dun it, dun it, dun it, dun it. There's a spider woman. Really cute. This one is Maria, my female Formictopus erratus, which is the Cuban bronze. A tea that gets up to about 72 inches as females. And super hungry eater. Alright, here's Talia. She is my Grandma Stola Poteri female, the common rose here. She's been mated last year with Roscoe, Rose's mature male. So hopefully she'll drop a sack. As I'm waiting. Let's see what's going to happen with uh, my Jeepo Terry. Oh, last week she ate fine. Hmm. 
Come on, Talia, we don't have all day. Okay, looks like nothing's gonna happen. All right, this one is a female P. Erminia, the Venezuelan sun tiger. This is Josie. Oosh! Right in the kisser. Let's uh, give it a little close up shot of her. I just love the red highlights on the tarsi, which is the foot pads. I'll give her two to see how she acts towards it. All right, this one is a pretty looking male. Uh, this is Brachypalma albiceps, the Mexican gold red rump. Another unique Brachypalma species. Oh, I love the fang action on this one. There we go, I love it. All right, this one is Willow. She is my female Lassidora difficilis which is the Smoky Great Bird Eater. I named after the Angry Birds character. Certainly not a bird, but very angry. So, contact. Ooh, love the pounce on that one. Yep, she's probably around four inches. Very similar color to the Lastidora Parahibana. Beautiful. All right, this female pokey is in desperate need of a nolt. So this is Pisolotheria uh, fasciata, Sri Lankan ornamental. Oh, nice. Yeah, you can tell that her carapace is really dull colored. Yeah, she's about four inches from Tarantula Canada. All right, here's Seb. Pisotheria Hanuma Villa Semica, the Ramesh Warm Ornamental. I feel so weird to say Pisotheria, and I'm so used to saying Pokeotheria. There we go, yoink. Yeah, he's about, oops, sorry, buddy. He's about three and a half inches. Sex to male. All right, this one here is a female Salopius Cambridge, Trinidad Chevron. Uh, this is a female. Yeah, that's a predatory bite, so she might actually be due for a molt. Yeah, there she is. Not the friendliest of the Samopoas. Oh, sorry, or rather Samopias. Alright, this one here is an unsexed Vicolera Vicolaria. South American pink toe, or just pink toe for short. So I dumped a cricket in, see how well this one will take it.
looks like this one might not be hungry. Quite possible. Alright, so what you're seeing right now is a unsexed spiderling of Pisoltheria rufolata, which is the red slate ornamental. Uh, this is a half inch unsexed specimen uh, that I got from Suleiman for my birthday, courtesy of Don from Tangled and Webs. So, the cricket is right by the tee. And we're going to see what happens. Now, normally, pokies are exceptional eaters, um, they usually don't refuse food unless um, a pending molt is imminent which is probably the maybe the case here since I uh, don't know exactly when did this one molt okay let me try to push the cricket Sorry guys, I don't think this is going to happen today. Okay, I got some other ones, so let's try them. Alright, this one should be interesting. This is Tapnikinia species Union Island. Union Island tree spider. Of course. I love these tappies, they're phenomenal eaters. Look at that, took an adult cricket. And this is probably about an inch right now. Alright, moving back to some brachypelmas. This one here is Brachypelma vagans, Mexican red rump. This is Annette, my suspect female. There we go. Pretty awesome. Now we'll try my other bee wagons. Oh, I love that one. <laughs> that was cool. That was cool. Yeah, that's one is probably about, I would say, a good inch and a quarter, uh, almost showing its adult colors, as you probably saw in the other one. Uh, they're completely black, uh, and they have a townish outline on the carapace, and then they have a fully red-haired abdomen. That's how you distinguish between B. Vagans and B. Smith E or B. Hamori. Uh, you can find these in Mexico as well as certain parts in Florida. It's a little tidbit that you should take home. Alright, unsexed specimen of Brachypelma angustum, the Costa Rican red haired. Boosh. Quite similarly colored to the B wagons. Okay, let's start off with one of the smallest members of the Brachypelma species, uh, Bistro Dairy, which is the Mexican black velvet that only get up to about three inches as adults. So this one here is about an inch, unsexed of course.
All right, let's try my other Brachypelma Shodari to see if I got better luck on that one. We almost got an attack. I swear these quarter inch crickets, sir. Certainly a handful to deal with. Alright, Brachypalma sabulosum, Guatemalan red rump. Oh, got the leg. Oh yes, love it. Cool. All right, a photo palma calcodes, desert blonde, Tucson blonde, or Mexican blonde. Probably may got the legs, so it's getting a bit larger now. So this is the time where I'm going to be rehousing it on the next video. So that way, it has a better home. The spawn from hell. <laughs> okay, this one is due for another enclosure. Uh, this is my Fromictopus cancerides, the Haitian brown bird eater. Right now this is about an inch and a quarter, starting to show the adult colorations. Gone is the electric blue. So this guy, like my Calcodes, are going to get a 32 ounce, oh, sorry, 16 ounce deli cup. All right, so this is my freebie LP. Salmon Pink Bird Eater. Uh, this one is about a quarter inch when I got this one. Now it molted, so let's say it's about half an inch. Uh, it took a while to get the cricket in there because these smaller ones just keep on jumping about. So I'll let this one do its work. There's my third LP. All right, this one here is a unsexed spiraling of Trinio Palma Sazame, which is the Sazame's tea or the Brazilian Blue Beauty, however you want to call them. Uh, these guys got up to about four and a half inch leg span. They usually have a great appetite and they sport a blue coloration all over their body with a red abdomen. Pretty cool. So I don't think this one will eat. So we'll see if my second guy will eat. I got four of them, which we'll see two of them now and two in part two or three. Okay, here's the other guy. A 
of course the cricket gets away from me. Okay. Third time's a charm. Uh, did he get it? Yep, he did. Little cutie. All right, this one is Happy Go Lucky. Uh, this is a Thrixel Palma Prurians, which is the Chilean green velvet. Of course, the cricket gets out. Prison break. Beautiful. Yep, four and a half inches on this one, and they get up to, sorry, a coloration bluish green. Pretty interesting spider. Hungry too. That's typical of the Thrixel palma species. All right, time to take two. Yep. Oh, sorry guys. Camera's out of focus. There we go. Told you guys these are meat eaters. This one I have to rehouse. This is Cirthercanthus cineus, which is the blue Emilia. That's the common name that I adapted to it. Likely the not the right one. There we go. Don't see any coloration yet for the adults. From what I've been told, they have blue legs and a brown body. And there you have it guys, shelf number one complete, number two, three, and now four. So I think this concludes part one of the feeding video 139. Hope you enjoy it guys. I'm gonna be uploading it today on the 26th so that way you guys will see it. So tomorrow I will be starting shelves number five, six, and seven. And then we'll leave eight, nine, and 10 uh, for part three. And then of course at the end of every feeding video I'll give a clip on Maggie to see how well she's doing. She's doing absolutely phenomenal. Alright guys, so don't forget to subscribe, rate, and comment, drop a like if you like the video, and stay tuned for more feeding videos to come, and hopefully one of these days, if I'm not too busy, I'll make the Mythbusters review 54, I keep promising that, and I want to do the gaming videos. Alright guys, so thanks for watching.